If thou hadst known, even now, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. Luke 19, verse 42 through 44. <clears throat> From the crest of Olivet, Jesus looked upon Jerusalem. Fair and peaceful was the scene spread out before him. It was the season of the Passover, and from all lands the children of Jacob had gathered there to celebrate the great national festival. In the midst of gardens and vineyards, and green slopes studded with pilgrims' tents, rose the terrace hills of stately palaces and massive bulwarks of Israel's capital. The daughter of Zion seemed in her pride to say, I sit a queen and shall see no sorrow. As lovely then, and deeming herself as secure in heaven's favor, as when, ages before, the royal minstrel sang, Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, the city of the great king. Psalm 48, verse 2. In full view were the magnificent the magnificent buildings of the temple. The rays of the setting sun lighted up the snowy whiteness of its marble walls and gleamed from golden gate and tower and pinnacle. The perfection of beauty, it stood, the pride of the Jewish nation. What child of Israel could gaze upon the scene without a thrill of joy and admiration. But far other thoughts occupied the mind of Jesus. When he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Luke 19.41 Amid the universal rejoicing of the triumphal entry, while palm branches waved, while glad hosannas, awoke the echoes of the hills, and thousands of voices declared him king. The world's redeemer was overwhelmed with the sudden and mysterious sorrow. He, the Son of God, the promised one of Israel, whose power had conquered death and called its captives from the grave, was in tears, not of ordinary grief, but of intense irrepressible agony. <clears throat>